John Anik and Kenny Florian podcast. John Anik and Kenny Florian. I f***ing love them. I can't get enough of them. Let's hear that buzz tonight. Big job there from Duffy and Frank Mir is hurt now. Down goes Duffy. Oh, God. Frank Mir does it again. Rock em, sock em, robots here. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe There are a couple of absolutely self-involved bull****. Here are your hosts, John Anik and Kenny Florian. All right, good to be back in your respective lives. Wednesday, March 20th, 2024, episode 475 of the Anakin Florian Podcast. Ken, Flo, there was a time in my life where I would fill out an NCAA tournament bracket for March Madness with so much attention, time, and detail, and energy, and excitement, and I haven't even filled out a bracket, kid. I mean, I don't know if that speaks to my mixed martial arts fanaticism or my right. age or what, but I think I need to fill out a bracket. Well, I'd imagine it's hard to keep up with everything you got going on, dude. But yeah, for me, like I remember doing like high school was a big thing. College, it was a big thing. Even when I was working after college, it was kind of a thing amongst all the workers. But now, dude, I mean, the only thing I watch is MMA. And even that right now with everything going on is, is tough to keep up with. So I feel you. All right, later today, we're going to talk to Trey Ogden. He will fight Kurt Hollibo in the featured prelim coming up UFC Fight Night. Nama Yunus versus Hebas this weekend. If you want Ken Flo's picks, those can be accessed on our full-length episode from Monday. He and Brian Petrie went six deep on the main card. They also spent their $1,000. you got to feel pretty good about the way you're hitting them on the main event challenge. You haven't lost a fight in two weeks, so I think you're seven six seven successive winning bets right so you're seven and oh spanning your last seven bets you have pared it down a little bit you stopped yeah. doing parlays i mean one of those <laughs> seven hits was a parlay um but dude couple straight wagers i'm stunned that we've gotten to march 18th and not one of you guys has done a one thousand dollar straight wager on a fight yeah well that scares me man it does scare me and, and you know on those parlays i i was missing them by like one fight and it was like something weird happening and this and that so I don't know. I, I deserve this, John. Damn it. I deserve yeah, this. No. Yeah. I, so I, I, I'll take it, dude. I'll take it. I, I need this lead and hopefully I can uh, keep it going for the rest of the weeks. So we're going to have a round table later. We'll do some UFC 300 stuff with Jason Anik and Big Ron Pellegrino. We'll also talk about Kamzat Shimaev. To what extent is he overrated, perhaps underrated? We'll also talk about a potential first title defense for Ilya Topuria. But we're going to spend some time on UFC 300. And, dude, I was laughing out loud when I went through this fight card this morning. Now, yeah. I'm on the record as suggesting that UFC 299 in Miami is the deepest fight card I have ever been assigned to call. And that is absolutely the case. But when I look at UFC 300, and this is going to sound hyperbolic because the UFC cuts my paycheck, but bro, like, it's absurd. Like, the early prelims are absolutely absurd. Absurd. It's four main events for the early prelims. Yeah, no, absolutely. Dude, you could break this card up and make three different events, and I'd be excited about all of them. Like, again, uh, you know, you have Cody Garbrandt, Davison Figueredo. First fight of the yeah, night. Yeah. First fight of the night. That's ridiculous. But, yeah, man, like, if you took the early prelims, you put it on in a, a main a, a fight night, I would be stoked for it. And then the prelims are insane. So, yeah, and then the, the main card, of course, is fire. So, yeah, man, they stacked it. No question about it. Uh, as far as, like, strength, skills of fighters, um. Yeah, I I know I said UFC 299 was better, but I mean, when you have this level of fighter on the early prelims, I don't remember a card like this um, in ever. The featured bout of the early prelims, and these will all be on ESPN, I believe. Jalen Turner and Hanato Moicano, that is the 13th Sick. and final fight added to the card. But it's crazy how little shine there has been for Zhang Wei Li and Yan mm -hmm. Xiaonan. And Zhang Wei Li, you can be sure, is going to get her shine leading up to UFC 300. As watchable as any fighter in mixed martial arts, man or woman. And nobody is talking about her because the surrounding tissue is yeah. just absurd. I don't want to steal the thunder because I think we're going to go a little bit more in depth later. But uh, it truly is an embarrassment of riches. And uh, I have a little bit of a respite in my schedule right now. And the anticipation, the excitement for UFC 300 uh, is on. Kenny, I did want to ask you about the PFL and your role as commentator. Uh, I know we did not see you on a show earlier this year. So I just didn't know if you had anything to uh, bring to our audience. I know there's a show April 
12th on the eve of UFC 300 in Las Vegas? Or, or are you going to yes. be there? What does your future hold as far as that is all concerned? Yeah, originally I was supposed to be working it, uh, but but I did inform the PFL that I, I was no longer going to do broadcasting for them. Uh, and uh, yeah, you know, it, it was a tough decision, but it was something that I felt uh, made sense for me at this stage of the game. Um, you know, gonna gonna focus on uh, the Anik and Florian podcast and and being a dad. I've I've had a you know, uh, I've been very grateful that I've been able to spend a lot of time with my family. I'll be continuing to do that, and uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll be I'll be watching uh, these fights from the sidelines a little. Bit. Wow, how about that? So I didn't know all of that. I knew some of the depth of that, but certainly not all of it. Doting Ken Flo, father, right, father of the <laughs> fucking year. So does this have anything to do with Bitcoin success or no? <laughs> <laughs> you're not the only one to ask that for some reason it helps it helps huh. but uh you know I, I but uh, you know for me it's just uh, at this stage of the game i i, I figured um you know, this, this was probably the best decision for me and my family at this stage of the game. All right, man. Well, we'll miss hearing you on the PFL. I'm not sure I'm going to be buying those pay-per-views anymore, but uh, <laughs> we hope to see you on a microphone. You know, I think you're the best analyst in mixed martial arts and uh, you, honored we are, all of us, to have you in this space. Right now, Bitcoin's over 67000 It went over 72000 at one point in time. Yes. But I do have to say, I reached out to Ken Flo a couple weeks ago. When it was down at like 51,000, or I should say up to 51,000. Yeah. And I was like, Ken Flo, I think I maybe should get in. What do you think? And he was like, Yeah, if you can afford it, get fucking in. So we put three grand on Bitcoin at 51,000, and now we're at 67. So what we might have to make another purchase today because it's down from 72 to 67. But uh, all right. So Ken Flo no longer uh, on the sticks with the PFL. And uh, we look forward to whatever the future holds as far as that's concerned. But uh, Bitcoin, holding loud and proud. All right. Well, if you are looking to level up your nicotine routine, Lucy is your answer. Deliver straight to your door. Lucy is 100% pure nicotine, always tobacco free. And not only can you choose your form, Lucy pouches, breakers, or gum, but you can also choose your strength from as little as two milligrams to as high as 12. If you've been underwhelmed by the effects of other nicotine pouches, you can also choose your flavors such as mint, apple, ice, espresso, or mango. One customer review says, quote, Best nicotine pouches I've found. Feel and taste great. Couldn't be happier with my monthly subscription. Another user acknowledges receiving all-day focus from this clean nicotine alternative. And don't forget to check out those Lucy Breakers. I'm telling you, one-of-a-kind nicotine pouches with a tiny capsule inside. The product that really sets Lucy apart. So let us level up your nicotine routine with Lucy. Go to lucy.co slash afpod and use promo code afpod to get 20% off your first order. Lucy offers free shipping and has a 30-day refund policy if you change your mind. That is lucy.co and use code AFPOD to get 20% off and always free shipping. And here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age. And every order is age verified. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. All right, now with us on the guest line. In my mind, one of the more underrated lightweights on the UFC roster. A guy who is set up potentially for a massive 2024. Also the owner and head coach of the Marathon MMA Academy in Overland Park, Kansas. Trey Ogden is with us. Trey, welcome to Fight Week, brother. How we doing? Good, man. Feeling great. Thanks for having me on. It's our pleasure. We won't keep you long, buddy. So 24th Pro Fight. I know you've had some big ones. This is the featured prelim this weekend against Kurt Hollibo. Uh, this one feels pretty big. How are you feeling about it? Yeah, same. I mean, like the old saying, every fight feels like the biggest fight of your life, you know. But this one has got a little different. I think that Kurt is um, one of the better guys I've fought. Um, I know Daniel Zaluba was very good as well. Um, all, all the guys I fought was good, but Kurt, he presents some unique challenges. I'm really interested in getting to test myself against him. Um, it's, it's an honor to get to fight with a uh, ultimate fighter winner or a uh, tough winner. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this one, man. You know, my Kenny Florian bias sometimes gets in the way, but I've always suggested that 155 pounds is the best division in mixed martial arts. And I think, you're sort of a case study on that, maybe number 50 in the world right now, but on any given Saturday night competitive against a lot of guys in that top 25, if not top 15. Mm -hmm. Your last fight, certainly for you, your family, your fan base, frustrating end to it. You're essentially on the verge of a submission win. It ends up being ruled a no contest. Not trying to put you on the spot, but was there any resolution financially or otherwise after essentially you have a submission win? taken away yeah unfortunately not man um you know uh i thought right after the fight that it would get you know that i would get paid the win money and everything would get fixed because it seemed really clear and i had won on all three judges scorecards and we were past the halfway point of the fight 
Um, so like a lot of times it would go to the scorecards, but, um, so we appealed it to the commission, um, and they upheld the no contest. Um, and then, um, we did ask for the win money and we didn't receive it. I was never told a hard no that I wouldn't get it, but it just kept getting like pushed to like elevate it up. And then as far as I was aware, it just kind of stayed on Dana White's desk. So, um, I do think that, uh, I don't necessarily take it personal. I do think that my fight was week before Thanksgiving. And the UFC staff and everyone in the commission and everyone goes out that week, you know, uh, on vacation. And then they came back into like the last few cards of the year and then back to the holidays. So I just feel like it didn't get the attention it deserved because of the timing of when it happened. But, um, you know, I, I, it's all good karma. And uh, I feel like if you keep putting into this game, uh, it'll, it'll eventually pay you back. So um, it was a tough pill to swallow, though. And uh, I had to, like when it first happened, because honestly, it was one of the best performances I've ever had. It right. was a fantastic fight. And um, I knew right away, I was like, man, the whole narrative of this fight is going to be this instead of the actual fight that took place. And that bothered me. But what I started to notice was after like a week or two after the fight, um, like my own personal narrative was being replaced. Like my memory of the event was being replaced by this like frustration and stuff. And so I realized that if I didn't um, make peace with it and let it go, that I wouldn't be able to fully absorb the experience of the fight. And these things have, the longer I go, it's always been a little bit of a spiritual journey for me, you know, but they get more so each time. And my last fight week was a beautiful week for me. Like internally, my weight cut was a very beautiful experience for me. And then the fight itself, was a great experience for me. And so I had to just let it all go so that I could just sit in that moment and really be with, be with my art, you know, because it's bigger than just money, but I would like the money. Yeah. And, and it's gotta be frustrating considering you had the submission, man. And at the end of the day, that will always be a no contest. So I, I guess how, how did you overcome that mentally? <clears throat> well, you know, at first I drank a lot of beer <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, I've had a lot worse things happen to me in this game. A lot of things can go wrong in a fight. And, like, I was – the longer I do this journey and the closer I get to fight week and in fight week, lately I just keep getting filled with, like, overwhelming gratitude for the things I have in my life. And so, like, a lot of it was, like, you know, like, at this point in my life, I, I refuse to see myself as a victim you know, and so I'm not going to sit around and feel bad for myself, but I, um, I was very grateful that I got to fight the fight because I trained very hard for the fight. So obviously the result is very frustrating, but it could have been an eye poke in one minute into the first round and then it's called a no contest. And then I didn't right. actually get the thing. And, and so I was just very grateful that I got to fight. I, everybody that I know, all the people I know in person, those are the people I fight for and they all we're very proud of my performance. And so I just tried to stay focused on the performance and how I felt in the fight and how I felt in fight week and how I felt in my weight cut and the beautiful like insights I had that week in, into myself and, and stuff. And I just had to let it go, man. Um, but I'm not here to say that it was easy or that it, that was just like a, like some kind of instant enlightenment, you know, it, I, it was frustrating. For sure. Uh, understood, man, for sure. Uh, and, and Trey, you know, looking at this next fight, you know, you guys are both Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belts. You can both have a ton of submissions on your record. Um, both very good strikers as well. Uh, how do you break this one down? Are you guys similar fighters? And, and where would you see yourself having the advantage? <clears throat> well, I definitely think that we're both complicated puzzles in our own right, you know. But I don't know. On paper, we might look similar, but I don't think that we're really that similar. I think that there's going to be a pretty good gap in physicality between me and Kurt. I do think I'll be faster than him. I do think I move longer than him. Um, I do think I make better all decisions more consistently and for longer than him. Um, but he is dangerous on the feet and he is also dangerous on the ground. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes you have a guy who's dangerous on the feet or dangerous on the ground and me and Kurt are both dangerous in both places. So that brings its own obstacles. Um, but you know, in one sense, like what I see is Kurt gets behind in his fights a lot. Like he does make mistakes and he does get behind. And um, typically once I get going on you, there's not a lot of getting up or recovering. But the other 
flip side of that is Kurt can lose a fight for a while and still win. And so he's, he's going to be there all night and he's going to be dangerous the whole fight. Um, but I do think that I'm going to be too much for him physically and technically. You've had a good strength of schedule in the UFC and a lot of different physical challenges. The win over Daniel Zell Huber. You face the outstanding long striker, Nacho Ignacio Bahamundes. But yeah, this Kurt Holobo is a fucking bull. I'm, I'm excited to watch you guys fight. So where do they have you guys staying this week? Uh, it's at the Palace Station. Okay. All right. Um, but better I, draws I wanna, than that out there, but it is what well, it is. I always get an Airbnb in Vegas, so yeah. no big deal. Um, I've learned my lesson. I yeah. want to sleep good on fight week. And Vegas hotels... Like on Tuesday, they're one thing, but by Thursday, they're oh. another thing. By Friday, it's just, boy, it just builds, right? And it's like you have you, you can't control who's sleeping in the rooms next to you. So I always go off-site now, so no big deal to me. Smart. So Marathon MMA, head coach, owner, how do you sort of balance the coaching and the fighting? And do you, do you feel like you have to sort of compromise one to serve the other master? Well, to me, it's all one mission. At Marathon MMA, my mission is to master the patterns of martial arts. I'm trying to basically essentially solve the, the playbook. Um, I don't think that anyone has done this yet. When I look at, like, let's say John Donaher, for example, and you look at his jujitsu team and you see like a group of guys that are running uh, all the same system at elite level guys and winning all the time with the same system of information, you don't see that in MMA yet. What you see is individuals that are ahead, but there are no teams that have pulled ahead technically and obviously. Um, I'm trying to get ahead of the curve technically and solve, solve and master the patterns of martial arts. So that is my mission. Uh, competing is a part of that mission. Coaching is a part of that mission. And teaching people that don't compete is also a part of that mission. And um, I'm doing martial arts all day long. That's why we call it the martial arts marathon. It is a lot to balance. Um, but I feel like it all adds to itself. So like maybe coaching full time, like I do, maybe you would think is distracting as me as the fighter, but I get a lot out of like coaching Garrett Arnfield and going and cornering against Brad Katona and winning that fight with him. These are experiences that add to my overall fight IQ, add to I'm backstage a lot more than a lot of fighters. You know, I coach almost every weekend at regional shows too. And um, <clears throat> so it's big energy right now for our team. We also have Miles Jones took a short notice fight on the yep. same card as me, one of my guys, uh, one of our guys. And uh, what's really cool here is Garrett Arnfield took out the 135 tough winner. I'm, I'm about to fight the 155 tough winner. Miles is fighting the 135 uh, runner up. So after we take these two dudes out, we took out Brad Katona. Austin Hubbard, bro, you better watch out because uh -huh. we're going to finish this, dude. We're going to finish all four. Dude, I we love it. I had I hadn't thought about that angle at all. Uh, yeah, it's crazy, but uh, we're, we're here for it. We're the ones for the mission. And, dude, I love your whole martial arts outlook. I feel like I'm talking to Kenny Florian, you know, uh, <laughs> oh, really and I know he's you. just nodding with your every word. I did want to ask you quickly about Garrett Armfield because that's a huge win over – That was great, man. Brad Katona going to beat a lot of people, right? I mean, that's a huge yeah. win for you and your gym, so congratulations on that. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we felt like uh, Brad Katona is a tough out for anyone in the top 15 any day. Um, we trained for the very best fighter in the world. <clears throat> Garrett really stepped up to the plate in that camp. He did everything I asked him to do. It was very hard training, very high volume, very high pace. Um, and he was very focused, a true professional. He believed in the game plan. He believed himself and he went out there and executed a win the win yeah. of his career so far. And, uh, I was so happy for him and so proud of him and what an honor to be a part of that event and to get the coach against a great team like Kavanaugh and, uh, Brad Katona. And I think I might have said our Marathon MMA was in Missouri and Lawrence Tynes, the former Kansas City Chiefs kicker, uh, acknowledged my error on X. And just so you know, for a commentator, right, That's as happy crazy. as I was for Garrett, yeah. I was like, fuck, man, I fucked up this whole thing. Well, I really um, appreciate you shouting the gym out on the broadcast as well, man. So uh, all good. We're, we sit right on state lines. So all right. Missouri, Kansas, all, right. all the same. But that is so cool that the you said the Chiefs kicker knew yeah, my dude. gym. Yeah. That's incredible, man. Yeah. That's so, awesome. uh, all right, a little rapid fire with Trey Ogden on the way out. Richard Lee Ogden the third, if you're keeping track at home. So, <laughs> yes, favorite sports team outside of mixed martial arts? I mean, are you a Kansas City Chiefs fan at all? Oh, man. Well, you have to be, especially yeah. living here, you know. Um, yeah. But I, I'll be honest. I don't really watch sports outside of fighting. So, yeah. Um, Fair. Yeah. All right, next question. Dogs or cats? Dogs, for sure. I have two of them. 
Does anyone answer fucking cats, though? <laughs> Gar- Garrett Arnfield. Gar- Garrett Arnfield. Does he? All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. tell him he can't come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, pineapple on pizza. Yes, no. Are you offended by it? Where do you stand? Pineapple as a topping on pizza. I wouldn't order it, but I could handle it. Pineapple is actually something that's good on like that kind of like pineapple on a steak or something. It, it, it's okay, okay, but I wouldn't right. do it to myself, you know. Right, but <laughs> that's a good way to put it. But he's not going to judge others. So Dom, right. Cruz I'm and okay I, Dom, Dom and I, you know, Dom's Dom orders pepperoni and pineapple. So thank you, thank you for not judging us. So if you could eat any food in the world after a win on Saturday night and have it delivered to your Airbnb, what are you? Uh, what are you shoving down your gullet? Oh man. Either cheeseburgers and beer or pizza and beer. All right. Yeah. Get this man some fucking beer and not Bud Light. Yeah. No, maybe Bud Light. <laughs> Brian Stan loves Bud Light. Now, I can't say anything. That's right. <laughs> uh, best fighter in your gym that no one has heard of? That no one has heard of. Oh, man. You put me on the spot because there's a lot of them and they're going to listen to this. Um, <laughs> man, uh, I think the next one in the UFC out of our gym is Zach Scroggin. All right. He's an undefeated uh, amateur at welterweight, undefeated pro at welterweight. I think he's 6 and 0, about to be 7 and 0, five finishes. So, he's definitely the next one coming out of our gym. And he's cornered you in the past at least on my he, note here. Yeah, he went with me uh, uh yeah, he went with me. He was in the Bahamondes corner. There you yep. go. All right, Trey Ogden fights Kurt Holabo in the featured prelim this weekend from the UFC Apex in Vegas on Instagram. You can find him at marathon underscore MMA. My man, appreciate the time. Wish you all the best with the weight cut and the fight. And uh, thank thanks you, sir. for uh, a few minutes. We'll talk to you on the other side. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. My pleasure. There he is, Trey Ogden, UFC lightweight hopeful with us here on the Anakin Florian podcast. Interesting guy, Ken Flo, you know, similar mixed martial arts outlook to a guy like you. And when I hear him talk about sort of a team dominating in jujitsu, John Donaher, he's right. Like no team in MMA for all the great teams out there that have realized other worldly success, American top team, city kickboxing, kill cliff FC on and on. I could go. I'm sure the other gyms are all offended right now that I only named three, but None of them have mastered MMA to the point where they can coach their athletes to go out there and in one particular fashion, just dispose of the opposition repeatedly using that martial art or that submission. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, we- I, well, well, I think it's something we should be chasing. And, and I think, you know, in a lot of ways, we also need to go further because this game changes and you have to be able to evolve with it. So, you know, while we've seen a lot of gyms become successful, um, they become successful for a period of time, um, and then the game changes yet again. So it's one of those things where I, I believe it's something we should be chasing as far as mastery, but also it's something that's evolving all the time. And I think like, I knew we were going to have a good conversation because when I looked at who his favorite was, it athletes or fighters were, it was Hicks and Gracie. So I go, ah, here's yeah, a guy who's no. a martial arts historian. So it, it was cool. And a lot of these other sports, whether it's the NFL or the NBA, Major League Baseball has affected a lot of recent change. They made the bases bigger, mm. right, resulting in more stolen bases, less time for a pitcher to deliver the pitch to home plate. I do think we have to evolve the sport as far as rules as well. Right? Yeah. Give the judges fucking half points. Jesus right. Christ. Right. <laughs> All right. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here in DraftKings Sportsbook. One of America's top rated sportsbook applications is giving new customers a shot to turn five bucks into one hundred and fifty dollars instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. So right now, live on DraftKings Sportsbook, the Yukon Huskies are the favorite to cut down the nets and win the men's tournament plus 400. You can also bet on who will win each region, such as Purdue, maybe plus 165 to win the Midwest. You can bet on all the individual games as well. So much action to be had. And North Carolina listeners, by the way, don't forget DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. Tar Heels, about plus 1,400 or so to win it all. And of course, all the UFC lines available for this weekend's UFC fight night as well. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the promo code AFPOD. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code AFPOD. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario, bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash bball for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. 
All right. Have a nice feature for you today. And by the way, the Jim Beam, I think, can be a performance enhancer for reading commercial spots, but it affects the throat a little bit. We're going four wide. We're calling it the Ron Table, not the UFC Round Table. It's a fucking Ron <laughs> Table. <laughs> Jason Anik, are you eating? Jay, what are you eating right now? You're, I mean, muted fucking microphone, and you're eating? <laughs> I was about to ask if I'm allowed to chew gum. Take your fucking gum <laughs> out, man. Big Ron Pellegrino, <laughs> owner of the Paradise Cantina, joining us live from Las Vegas for the UFC Roundtable today. Gentlemen, oh, we'll start with you, Ronald. How we doing, Big Ron? What's up, boys? The brothers, Anik and Flo. What's good? What's happening? Big Ron. So Big Ron's got this amazing setup at his palatial condominium. And Jay, you come on smacking gum with your blue <laughs> microphone. Like, was that a bit to come on chewing gum today? Uh, no. Speaking of microphones, what's up with the studio? Didn't test it out a couple minutes ahead, so it didn't work. And now you're fucking scrambling. <laughs> yeah. If you really want to know, I should have gotten to the studio sooner because the roadcaster needed an update and uh, I did not manage time no. well. And uh, here we are, you know, but we're certainly not chewing gum on a on a live broadcast of a podcast that's been around for like nine years. But, uh, well, I was, uh, never mind. I, uh, I'm, I'm going to save what I was going to say. I'm not going to say it. Uh, right. look at that. Look at that gold gorilla, huh? Right. See when we, when the studio breaks down, at least we get the, uh, the full and his name's Gus. Gus. All right. So a lot of Gus. things I want to get into Jay, I know you have some topics that you want to throw at me and Kenny, but I want to start real quickly. If I could with UFC 300, because you thought I was going to leave with Marcin Tabora's haircut. We'll get to that. You can be sure. Wheels up to Turkey for Big Rob Pellegrino. <laughs> yeah, let's <laughs> go. He needs a ride like himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You guys go together. You know, he speaks English. Two UFC, one 300, deal. <laughs> UFC 300, Pereira versus Hill. So I was doing a little bit of prep this morning. And this fight card is absurd. It truly is, right? I know it was the flavor of the month to suggest that maybe UFC 299 in Miami was better. And Ron, as good as it was, right? Davison Figueredo is one of the most electric fighters in UFC history, future Hall of Famer, fighting another former champion, Cody Garbrandt. You'll be in the building, Ron, but these dudes are going to hit the tunnel at fucking 3.30 Pacific or so. And bad lead off, dude, this Great. I mean, Jim Miller and Bobby Green in the second fight of the night. So with respect to UFC 299 and UFC 200 and all the fight cards that have come before it, this right here, this fight card that I'm looking at draft one is the best fight card in UFC history. I mean, without a doubt. I listen to everybody. You know, it was classic. To, that's what we do. Everybody MMA, Twitter, X, whatever it's called. It's all we do is bitch. We bitch about everything. And we have. The greatest time ever in the history of mixed martial arts. It's it's literally the best time ever. It's never been bigger. And this fight card, I got sweaty palms from your buildup. I don't even get sweaty palms. Let's go. I Listen can't to this guy, it, John. John, so what, 299 was the best one you ever, you ever going to call? All right, now 300, <laughs> the best one you call. And the reason I'm on mute, I got a fucking guy power washing out here, okay? We're All power right. washing the patio <laughs> here. But anyway, 299 was the best, now 300. 301, just going to. Did it trump them all, huh? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. But anyway. Oh, man. He's popped. Sweet there Dreams Hill, baby. I want to hear Flo talk about Because, Kenny, with respect, I don't know if I, I feel like there's some of us that give Jamal Hill a better chance than others. And maybe I would put you in the category of others. So, Sweet Dreams Hill, certainly in shape right now. Big Ron sees him here and there in Vegas. Flo, oh, you yeah. give He's Sweet Dreams any yeah. more of a chance now than maybe you did a few weeks back when it was announced? Yeah, listen, I think that his best bet heading into this fight, regardless of, of how healthy he is or not, is to get it done early against Pereira. Um, I, I think Pereira, you know, uh, obviously we all know about his kicking game and all that stuff, but Jamal Hill, he's got power. He has very potent uh, hand strikes for sure. Um, you know, in both hands, I think he has knockout power. He's very fast, uh, very clean in his ability to get in and get out. And I think that's where he can win this fight. Um, so, yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think that um, early on, he's going to be extremely dangerous, whereas Pereira needs to chip away at Jamal Hill and then over time start taking the fight his way. But I think early Jamal Hill is going to be very, very dangerous and, and definitely has a shot of winning. 
Well, Lex Pineda right now minus 135 on DraftKings Sportsbook. Jamal Hill comes back at plus 114, which is suggestive of the fact that if Jamal Hill was not coming back, perhaps prematurely from a torn Achilles, that he might actually be favored in the fight. Uh, Ron, do you have any lean on that UFC 300 main event as we sit here, you know, about oh, a month man. out? And I tell you, I'm so excited about that fight. I Same thing. I wish Jamal had three more months, you know, but I got to sit there with him in Anaheim, watch the entire prelims. It was me, him and Bilal. We were talking and uh, we caught up. He pops in the, va- you know, in the canteen every now and again. And he looks good. I mean, he's a big boy. Like, I'm not a little guy, fellas. And that kid is thick. How he makes 205, impressive anyway, but... Huh. He said he's going to go right across Agnan. I mean, I don't think this is breaking news because he said it on his own YouTube, but he's like, I'm going to box him. I'm going to go right across the octagon, and I'm getting it on right off the bat. He goes, no, yeah, he should. Pardon my language. Yeah. yeah. No, I so, mean, he's going to go um, for it. I'm a little bit surprised at the betting number, though. Alex Pedeta minus 135. You know, I would think for those who factor Hill's health into the equation and Alex Pedeta's schedule. Well, Vegas, I feel like knows something, No. Well, Poetons, is, God, man, what's a scarier guy to come back? You know, especially after a, I don't mean, I don't even know what you call an Achilles injury. I mean, like the worst one. I don't even know what you call that. But the fact he's doing it in less than a year, nine months, ten months, uh, back in there after surgery, going against that killer, I would have liked to see a few different guys across from me if I was in. But, yeah. but you know what? These Achilles show, injuries he's about it. You know, I don't mean to interrupt you, but Aaron Rodgers summoning mountains with Cameron Haynes, you know, Kirk Cousins signing a contract with the uh, Atlanta Falcons, both smashed their Achilles or tore him just like Jamal. So different time, you know, Um, I know. And and Rodgers certainly a lot older. Well, different sport too, Jay. I mean, you don't have a guy trying to kill you with that stone foot he has to just just kills everybody. But I agree. I agree. All right, Jay, I know you have some topics you want to throw our way, but I just want to say in closing, I don't think, Kenny, it's a great reach for me to say UFC 299 is the deepest fight card I've ever been assigned. And then the next one I call is UFC 300. Like this middle batch of prelims, Kenny, Sadiq Youssef and Diego Lopez will start that portion. (laughs) That's a UFC fight night main event. Kayla Harrison right, is one of the most decorated combat sports athletes of all time. She yep. is not even the featured prelim. She's not even the bout before the fucking featured prelim, right? right. She's going to be competing at like 5 o'clock in the afternoon, right? Calvin Cater and Al Jermaine Sterling, would you like to be the featured prelim? Sorry, guys, that slot is taken, but you can compete a little bit earlier than Yuri Prohaska and fucking Alexander Rockage. So Bananas. Stack, we're absolutely dude. loaded. Sure. And my favorite fight on the card, <laughs> Charles, Oliveira, Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira. And Armand Sarukian, second fight on pay-per-view. All those guys do is win. Jay, your shirt is pink. Your hair looks fruity. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> covered it up. I covered it up on an earlier episode. <laughs> what do you have for, uh, for the Ron table this week? For the Ron table, I like it. We got to start with Flo, though. I want to hear Flo first. Yeah, he's a star of the UFC title three times. <clears throat> But Kenny, I want to just say before I ask this question, for me, like it comes down to friendship. I, I've gotten to know Jamal Hill, so the blinders are on. You can be okay. sure. All right, here we go. Flo, many fans argue Hamza Chimaev not as dominant as he says he is. Some suggest goes all out in the first round, then coasts the rest of the fight. What are your thoughts on this? And was it in any way proved by his performances against Kamaru Usman and Gilbert Burns? Yeah. Oh, first of all, the, those are two very, very good fighters. And, you know, we tend to be very picky uh, as fans. And it's hard to say, you know, was Chimaev a victim of inexperience or, or did maybe Gilbert Burns raise his level uh, to fight uh, Chimaev? Right. Um, it, it's tough to say. Well, one thing he did answer, I think, in both of those fights is. He's extremely tough, and he's not just a hammer. If he gets hurt or if he struggles or has to do with adversity during a fight, he is going to respond very well. I think for me, the question mark is, can he pace himself extremely well over the course of three rounds or even five rounds? Um, And again, sometimes you're not able to do that until you actually do that. Um, I think Shumayev has serious firepower. Uh, when you're talking about uh, you know the ability to knock someone out on the feet, 
Uh, I think he is extremely athletic with his wrestling. And because of that, I think he's able to make up for whatever lack of technique he may have either with his wrestling or th- with his technique on the feet um, with that athleticism and with that horsepower. Um, and I think that if he is a student of the game, we will see an even better uh, Chimaev this time around or in his next fight. Um, so uh, can he be a champ at 185 pounds? Yes, I, I think he can be. I don't know if that's exactly what you were asking me, but as, as far as, you know, have we seen certain weaknesses? Yeah, I mean, a lot of guys will show certain weaknesses, and Chimaev is still relatively new at this game. He's not a guy with, like, 20 fights in the UFC, so um, I think he's still going to continue to get better. He's learned a lot, and he's fighting extremely high-level competition of the UFC very early in his career. Yep. And by the way, those fights against Gilbert Burns and Kamaru Usman were both wins for Kamzat Shimaev, who right. is still undefeated. He also is a guy who got deathly ill from COVID-19, retired from MMA. He never makes excuses, right? Certainly there have been some issues when it comes to the scale and his perceived desire to make 170 pounds. But I do believe in a broad sense, unless you are Marab Dwalish Willie, there is a price to be paid for buckets of MMA offense. And he is an offensive fighter who is always trying to kill the opposition and he's doing it with wrestling, with grappling, with strikes that take a lot of energy. So I don't know how sustainable it is to throw that much offense over 25 minutes, but I do believe Hamza Chimaev is a future UFC champion. I don't believe that I have overrated him. I just want to see him in an active, active competition cycle. And, uh, you know, hopefully 2024 or 2025 is the year for that. Big Ron, what do you think? I mean, some of the fan base believes that commentators like me have overrated Hamza Chimaev. I don't believe that to be true. Well, buddy, you've had a front row seat for this. <laughs> I mean, this guy is a whirlwind when he gets just his entrance. Like the last time uh, uh, when he missed weight against, um, it was supposed to be against um, Kevin Holland. He, first, he fought after no. Nate Diaz. Right? Who did he miss? Uh, Nate Diaz. No, I know he fought, but he was supposed to. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. He was supposed, he was supposed to fight, fight Nate Diaz and he missed fought Holland, Whatever yeah. the. Right. Whatever the. They were booing. This is the first time that he got a little bit of the dark side of the of the crowd, you know, because most of the time everyone goes nuts. And he sprinted to the octagon. I mean, this guy's a whirlwind. Now, if you want to say his tank falls off, you know, considerably in the third round or the late second round, you might be right. But you got to handle the first six, seven minutes of an absolute dynamo. I mean, like Kamara Usman is about as seasoned as it gets. And he was extremely overwhelmed. He He didn't get you know, finished or choked out in the first round. But if he doesn't dump Hamzad on his head when he took his back standing, he would have. So, I mean, you could say what you want. The guy's an animal. He's a whirlwind at 170 or 80. I don't think he's ever making 170 again. But at 85, he's a big boy. And that skill set, that one that he is absolutely amazing at, Usually, uh, usually get a championship out yeah. of that when you're that. Well, guy. haven't haven't seen him in a while. Seems like all these boys on the train. All right, we got another one for you. And I love how Ilya Tapuria, his countryman, <laughs> may rob getting the shot. All right, John, start with you here. Ilya Tapuria had suggested Tapuria. I like saying that had suggested he would not give Max Holloway, Yair Rodriguez, or Brian Ortega a title shot once he became champion. Do you think Tapuria has a say in this? Some cha- and I'll say some champions have more say than others. We've certainly learned over the years. Well, I think Ilya Topuria was just wanting to criticize fighters for inactivity or casting judgment at the old guard and hoping that maybe some new featherweight contenders would emerge. Ilya Topuria seemingly would have a lot of leverage right now. He was a pretty fucking big star before he went out and did what he did against the all-timer Alexander Volkanovsky. And if anybody has seen what his life has held since, you can understand that superstar status has already been attained. So, yeah, I mean, I think to your point, Jay, certain champions have more leverage than others when it comes to the next in line or opposition. But I think it stands to reason that he's going to fight one of the names that you just mentioned, and he will have no problem, Ken Flo, signing on the dotted line for that. Flo. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen... Uh, Can you name another fighter that has walked out in the center pitch of a Real Madrid game to be honored as a champ? Like, that's insane. I I guess that would be the equivalent of like maybe walking out in the Yankees or Red Sox game to be like, hi, I'm a champion of the UFC. Dude, this is massive, massive stuff. So, yeah, I do think he has a say. Uh, Even though he's a, a fresh champion, I do think he'll have a massive say in it. I also think he's playing head games with all of the guys that he's mentioning. 
Um, and he's doing two things. First of all, I think that um, he's getting all those guys to talk about him and get ticked off. And I also think that he's leaning towards a, a potential rematch against Volkanovsky, because if I'm Topuria, I would be saying I'd much rather face Volkanovsky going off two knockouts in a row than let him recover um, or have another win in between. I, I want this guy at his lowest low, and then maybe that's what Topuria wants as well. So, John, I don't know if we have more time here. Ron, get in there real quick. Ilya Topuria, who does he have next in your mind? Rematch? Yeah. Yeah, I see that. I mean, who well, like, you think about it, like Max, I would like to see him fight Max Holloway because if Max would bring the fight to him, you know he would. But yep, I mean, I wouldn't want to fight Max Holloway either. So, I mean, if you're going to, why not take the guy you just took out? You just said he's at two L's in a row. If it's a quick return, I mean, how fast are they? Would it, could, could they actually go to Spain this year? Is that a real thing or is this just like. You try to put it past can? them? What are you doing? Yeah. No, 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 no. I'm saying isn't like the schedule done or is that, does that change for a new market like that? Could they do that? Fuck it. Hopefully. I know they could. That's a stupid question. Hopefully not. Um, if if they did that rematch and and that was the reason how I mean Volko, you know him, he'll take it tomorrow. That guy don't care. But Taporia, yeah. man, this guy is James Bond, dude. He is he is a good looking dude and he is living the life before he became the champ. And now well, yeah, this guy's the I'd like to see new blood if it's up to me, and then let Volkresk and then him take the winner. Quick, John, if we have time, a quick one out of each of you. You fight at UFC 300, you're most looking forward to. And I'll say, because Sweet Dreams, my boy, it's absolutely the main event for me to see Sweet Dreams shut everybody up. Flo, UFC 300, as of this moment, which fight are you looking forward to most? I'm scrolling through this card. I'm like, damn, Sick, dude, there's bro. not one bad fight. I mean, not even close. They're all great fights. Zhang Wei Li competing? But for me, it, dude, it's it's <laughs> Gaethje and Holloway. Yeah, it, it, for me, it's Gaethje and Holloway, right? These are two badass dudes going at it who always fight the same way. You know exactly what you're going to get. They're going to go at it and uh, going to give us a great one. Uh, certainly a classic there. BMF belt, big Ron, quick. UFC 300, which Man. one are you looking forward to most? Yeah, Sweet dreams, Peloton, same as you, bro. I can't wait to see that fight. Got to be. John, you probably can't say anything. You want to give us an early prelim? Well, if you were listening earlier, I talked about Charles Dubronx Oliveira and Armand Sarukian, but some selective listening clearly from uh, <laughs> the, the second arriving twin. I'll just say, though, in terms of Charles Oliveira and his greatness, when I polled the fan base recently, or at least my following as to their favorite UFC fighter, overwhelmingly, it was Charles Dubronx Oliveira and John Jones and Dustin Poirier and others. But the amount of of fan adulation and adoration for Charles Oliveira, who's only lost one time since 2017, is just absurd. And yet half the fan base thinks Armand Sarugyan, who fought Islam Akashev in his UFC debut, is the best lightweight in the world. So Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sarugyan is as big a fight for the real fans as we can put together. Woo. And I'll get you guys out of here right, on Alex. this. Marching Tabora's haircut. Right. Ron, you're considering going to Turkey to get a hair transplant. Is that accurate? <laughs> no, I mean, if I was gonna, I'd go to the best and I'm supposedly they're the best. But you got a handsome face. Look, I mean, I have your head. Hair. Look, it's just yeah. shit. It's shit. It used to be dope. That guy, he looks like Road Warrior Mad Max with that. Like, <laughs> what was that? Where's he going with that? I actually think it's the lesser of certain evils, though. Yeah, like, like the like, lesser of two evils in the octagon. Did you? I mean, did you like Tai Tuivasa's do? Like, thank God I don't have anything close to that anymore. Like, what is that? <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. And then getting choked out? Yikes. Bam. Bam. Uh, just bam, yikes. Bam. Hey, John, are we not talking NCAA at all? We're just talking Tabora's haircut? We're going to give you a pick for the tournament or what? Certainly, tournament action begins in earnest on Thursday if you have a selection we will take a national champion. Who do you have? Yeah, unless you want to talk about Marcin Tabor. So, you know, I just want to say everybody loves UConn. For those of you that follow, follow college basketball, everybody loves UConn. Even UConn versus Purdue in the championship game. So I'm going to give you something a little off the beaten path. Kelvin Sampson, right? Been around for a long time. Uh, Houston, right? They've lost only 18 games in four years under this guy. Final four the first year, Elite Eight the second year, Sweet 16 last year. So going backwards, you would say, I think they're a little bit due. But John, if you're not going to talk about your Connecticut action, have you forgotten that you placed a bet very early on, 250, 
yields 2250 plus 900 on the Yukon <laughs> Huskies. They're a huge favorite, four to one right now, but I'm going with Houston. Your son, Hunter, wishes you went with Houston back in the day. So, Big Ron, if you have a pick on the NCAA tournament, I'm just going to get a little bit against the chalk there. Yeah, yeah, I'll throw a little, uh, I mean, it's not a huge dog or anything, but how about Creighton? How about Creighton out of nowhere? I got a feeling they're going to make the Final Four. They got a weak bracket against Houston. They're going to beat Houston. All right. Well, Houston's five to one. I don't know. Creighton probably a better odd than that. But uh, big money, bro. I'm just in it for the dogs, bro. Listen, March Madness. It's in the title. There you go. Jason Anik, Big Ron Pellegrino. You can follow those guys at Big Ron Bets at Boston Anik. We appreciate you uh, taking part in our UFC Ron table and uh, have a great fucking rest of your day. Jay, have you been drinking all day? I mean, Jesus, man. (laughs) What do you mean? See you guys. What do you mean? I'll stay. Oh, no, 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 no. What do you mean? What do you mean? (laughs) No, what do you mean? Later, coming at me hard today. I I think you is need that, to isn't go that what there. you want? Isn't that what you want? <laughs> hey, hey, you want me to go? You want me to yeah, go? Yeah, I think you. I think tool two box this thing, and you guys can uh, get on with the rest I'll of your go. day. Ron, great to see your face. You look good. You got some I'll color. Go. Hair looks good. We gotta go. You guys, later. See you, boys. Later, boys. All right, Jason Anik, Ron Pellegrino, joining us for some sh- shenanigans towards uh, towards the end of the program, man. I'm just happy that there's going to be a UFC fight night this weekend, and hopefully the hairstyle will not be uh, my lead story. Thank you to Trey Ogden, Richard Lee Ogden the third, joining us today on the Anakin Florian Podcast. Thanks to Big Ron. Thanks to Jason. Thanks to Ken Flo, our executive producer, Cody Merrow, without whom none of this would have been possible. JohnAnik.com for all of your merchandise needs. 20% off with promo code One More Sleep. All the new One More Sleep designs are out. We got the UK. We got Ireland. We got Australia, New Zealand. They're all out there. Kenny Florian, martialarts.com, worth a click as well. And we will talk to you guys after Rose Nama Yunus and Amanda Hebos. Coming up next Monday with that for Ken Flom, John Anik. Until then, have a great day and a better evening, an amazing weekend. We'll talk to you next Monday. Until then, go late. Can't keep your hands on the bar, he's an open man, he's cornbread. Corn-